All right, so now that we've reviewed cylindrical and spherical coordinates, um, we're going to look at how to do a triple integral using these coordinate systems. Uh, for cylindrical coordinates, the triple integral, um, the variables, because our cylindrical coordinates are z, we are, we are going to integrate with respect to z, r, and theta. Z, r, and theta are the two are the coordinates for the cylindrical coordinate system. Because we have an r and a theta in here, we want to tack on another r for an r, dr, d, theta, just like we would if it was a double integral. For spherical coordinates, our, our coordinates are rho, so we'll have a d rho, we'll have a phi, phi is the one that goes from the positive z axis down, and we'll have a theta, that's the one that goes from positive x-axis around in a circle. We also have a very similar, this r from the change in the coordinate system, we're going to describe that actually on the next video, but this r um, has an equivalent for spherical coordinates, which is rho squared sine of phi. So in tack, instead of tacking on r d r d theta like we would in cylindrical, for spherical we tack on rho squared sine of phi to the integral. All right, let's do some examples where we're going to sketch we're going to sketch the volume of a solid that's given by the following integrals. We'll do a couple of these. So, let's do an integral from 0 to pi, an integral from 0 to 3, integral from r squared to 9, r dz dr theta. Now we always work from the inside out. I'm going to look at this inside integral first which has z's in it. So for those z's that's an entire big shape. So let me actually underline all this in blue. Let's look at these z's. So first of all I look at this function. And the function says that z is equal to r squared, and I know that in either polar or cylindrical coordinates, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So if z is equal to x squared plus y squared, that is a paraboloid. So I can kind of I can sketch that that big the big picture, the biggest thing is that we have a paraboloid, and then we'll start seeing if we only have part of a paraboloid or not. So here's the x, the y, the z, and to start off with, we have a paraboloid. All right, now the top of this integral, so right here, it says that we are going to stop at a height when z is equal to 9 right there. So when z is equal to 9, we're going to stop. So we stopped right here. Let's call that 9. So there's z equals 9. All right, now let's move a little bit more inwards. So the next thing that we'll look at are the r's here that go from 0 to 3. So the radius goes from 0 to 3. And because this height was 9 here for z, the radius automatically here is 3. And so this doesn't affect this shape at all. This essentially does nothing. It keeps the entire shape. All right, now let's look at the next piece of this where we have theta and goes from 0 to pi. So theta goes from 0 to pi, so that's going to start on the positive x-axis, so right there, and then it's going to end on the negative x-axis. And so what we would do then is then cut off the entire left-hand side of this paraboloid. It's only going to give us the right-hand side of it. So the entire shape that this integral, um, that this, this integral represents is this right-hand side of the paraboloid that stops at z equals 9 with a radius of 
3. All right, let's do another one of these. So let's do one with, there was one with cylindrical coordinates. Let's do one with spherical. So let's do the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, the integral from 0 to pi over 3, the integral from 0 to 3 of rho squared sine of phi, d rho d phi d theta. All right, so once again, let's break this down, working from the inside out. Rho goes from 0 to 3. That describes a sphere of radius 3. So we could sketch that. I'm going to draw some axes on here. So we've got a sphere of radius 3. There we go. Sphere of radius 3. All right, so now the next part inwards goes to phi. Phi goes from 0 to pi over 3. Now 0 is on the positive z-axis, so there's phi equals 0, and it moves down towards the positive x, positive y, it moves downwards. So it's going to stop as soon as we hit an angle of pi over 3. So it's going to stop at an angle of pi over 3. So over here, it would stop at an angle of pi over 3. Both of those would be pi over 3 here on the x-axis. I'm not going to draw that one. It's, that would look a little weird if I drew too many of these in here. All right, so essentially what we're going to do is cut off a lot of this lower part of the sphere. The whole lower part of it is going to be gone. And now let's look at theta. So theta goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So theta being 0 is along the positive x-axis. So negative pi over 2 is over here on that negative y-axis, and pi over 2 is going to be the positive y. And so what this is going to do is cut off the whole back side of this sphere. All right, so now I've kind of made a mess of this drawing. Hopefully I can put this in in black of exactly what this is. So we've got the sphere, but it stops at stops when theta is pi over 3. So it stops right there. It still has a sphere kind of coming outwards out this direction. And I think if I draw a line kind of straight back that way, um, because if we cut off the back part of this, essentially what we're getting is kind of a cone, but well, it's kind of a snow cone. It's got stuff on the top of it as well. It's not just flat on the top. Um, it's got this stuff on the top of the cone, but it has no back to it. It's only half of it. So if I draw that, that dashed line in the back there, hopefully that gets across the point that this is just the front part of this, I would call it a snow cone. All right, let's do another example with spherical and cylinder coordinates. All right, so let's take an integral that's in rectangular coordinates, and it's in x's, y's, and z's, and then let's switch it to um, cylindrical. We'll do that first, and then we'll also switch it to spherical. Now, before we switch an integral, we really have to get an idea of what the bounds look like. Um, I have to draw these. Um, I'm not sure there's really any way around that. All right, so we need to draw these the bounds. I'm not worried about the inside right now. I'm ignoring that z squared for right now. So all I want to look at for now is this dz. So I know then that z is equal to the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. And so if I sketched that um, I would have a sphere, just the top part of a sphere. So this z equals is the top part of a sphere. 
working inwards here on Y. So with this Y, because that root is positive, we're only going to look at positive Y's. So we have the top part of the sphere, but only for positive Y's. And then looking at these X's here, we're also only going to have where X goes from 0 to 2. All right, let's put all this together into a graph. So x, x, sorry, y, and z. Now it's the top part of the sphere, so I'm not going to draw the bottom. It's only the positive y part of the sphere. This sphere, so there's positive y part of the sphere. And x only goes from 0 to 2. And this is a sphere of radius 2. Okay, so it's only the sphere in that first octant where x, y, and z are all positive. Okay, so now let's go to cylindrical coordinates. Now there's really two different pieces to this, to this integral. There's the inside piece, and I think of that separately from all of the bounds. Alright, so for the bounds, I'll go ahead and just draw three integrals in there for right now, because let's look at that inside piece first. So just that inside piece in cylindrical coordinates, z is z. So actually nothing changes there. That is just going to stay as z squared. So we can leave dz as the first integral, as the innermost integral. It would stay as 0. Square root of 4 minus, but now that we're going to cylindrical coordinates, x squared plus y squared is r squared, and so we're going to get 4 minus r squared in that upper integral. So now what I want to do for these outer two is I really want to look at what the xy plane is doing because that really shows me what exactly r is doing and what theta is doing. This xy plane, if I squished this sphere onto the xy plane, I would just get a quarter of a circle. So if I look now at this picture, the radius is 2, and theta goes from 0 to pi over 2. So this allowed me to get my r bounds and my theta bounds. So r is going to go from 0 to 2, theta goes from 0 to pi over 2, and I'm missing one more thing, and that is with the r dr d theta comes another r inside that integral. Alright, so that switched them to cylindrical coordinates. Now let's switch to spherical coordinates. Alright, so again, we'll have a triple integral. The inside part, z for the inside part in spherical coordinates, z is equal to rho cosine phi. And so we'll square that. So we'll get rho squared cosine squared of phi. And then we also need to multiply by the, the equivalent of that r, which in spherical coordinates is rho squared sine of phi. All right, now we can think about the outside integral. And the entire time, I'm going to look at this picture. Now, I know I have a sphere of radius 2. So that means rho is the radius. It's going to go from 0 to 2. So we'll do rho first. And then, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Maybe I'll pick theta next. Now, theta is the angle from the positive x-axis around so that's going to go from 0 to pi over 2, 0 to pi over 2. And then phi is from the positive z axis down. And so phi is also going to go from 0 to pi over 2. All right. And we would, um, we would integrate these exactly like we would integrate any of the other ones. We'd start on the inside and then work our way out.